So everything in life is kind of an iterative process. Iterative, meaning it iterates. It is a ongoing, you know, process where you're always kind of like one iteration, the next iteration, the next iteration, you know, evolving, making things different. That's life. And uh, there's iterative, relating to or involving iteration, especially if mathematical or computational. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's how I use the word. Anyhow, I'm saying that because I have changed this from the last video. And I changed it because when I was looking at it, I was like, you know what? It can be done a little bit better. So I changed it to be better. I just wanted you to be aware of that. So if you're looking at this, you're like, wait a minute, what happened to that other stuff? So I, I just renamed it and organized things a little bit differently. So now we're going to look at uh, the semantic HTML in more depth. And uh, we're going to look at the header, nav, and main. So we're going to become familiar with those three and look at the intricacies of those. Uh, but first, I just want to give you an overview of all of the elements, right, that we primarily use for layout, the uh, elements we primarily use for layout. And we could go and we could look at the documentation. So here's the documentation. And I could open each of these and look at them. But the one I want right off the bat is content sectioning. So what we're learning about is sectioning our content on a document. And, uh, and this is broken, uh, broken up all the different elements. It's the HTML element reference. We've been here before. And they're all broken up by function. So basic elements, document metadata, like the head, style, title, content sectioning. And so here in content sec sectioning, right, organize the document content into logical pieces or sections. We have an address article, footer header, headings, nav, and section. We also have H group, which I put in red, and over here it's in red, and uh, and it's in red because we right click that and open it. We've got this. This is an experimental technology. So the spec has not stabilized. Check the compatibility, right, before you use it. So if I wanted to check compatibility, I might go to caniuse.com and uh, and take a look at H group. Obsolete, deprecated HTML elements. H group. See ya. <laughs> so don't use H group, even though it's in there, right? It's in there for legacy reasons. If you're like, why don't they take it out? Well, you might inherit some code. You'll be like, what's H group? Well, you can come in here and you can look at it. So that's the importance of reading the documentation. So uh, yeah, coming in here, we could see the documentation for these different section elements and read about them. All right. So we already looked at what these are, these main ones. I just want to point out those are the semantic ones. There are div and span. They are not semantic. They don't convey any meaning, the tag in and of itself. All right, so there's the documentation if you want to look at it. Uh, now let's take a look at header. So this information that I got here was culled from the documentation. So go in and take a look at header and what kind of information do we get. So a header is a group of introductory or navigational aids. So cool, we could include navigational aids. So the nav can be inside the header, right? And introductory or navigational aids may contain some heading elements, but also other elements like a logo, must not be a descendant of header, footer, or address. So you can't have a header inside of a header. You can't have a header inside of a footer. If you're using address, you can't have a header inside of an address. So it can't be a descendant of, uh, of any of those. If we come over and we look at the documentation here, uh, the header element represents a group of introductory navigational aids. So same stuff, right, that I was just pointing out. The permitted content, flow content, but with no header or footer descendant, the parent elements. So uh, in tags, we talk about like the parent element and then the one that's nested inside is the child or the descendant. So anyone that accepts flow content, if we click that, we come over to content categories, which is another one of our links here, content categories, and we can see what flow content is. And so any of these could have a header except footer, header, or address, right? So any of these could have a header. Interestingly, the place we're probably going to use those the most is just in a section. Like, you know, a section has a, a header. And we saw that with uh, the article tag and the sections inspired from here. So this is uh, for the article. And uh, when we did article... Right, so this article here, it's like, you know, an article, and this is the header for the article. And then there's the article in that section. And then down here are the user reviews, so that's all of this section. And in this user review, right, we have a footer. 
So footer is going to be a lot like header, but we could have had a header in here if we wanted. And uh, but you know that's not the way this was structured. A footer got put in instead. You could have had both. But just again, kind of seeing how do we use these things and looking to the documentation for the examples. So you know. Uh, a group of introductory or navigational aids may contain some heading elements, but also other elements like a logo. Cool. So then we have the nav. And nav is a section with navigation links. A section with na navigation links. The links may link to other pages or to parts within a page. Not all links within a document must be a nav element, so that's really important. You don't have to put all of the links on a page in a nav element. It's intended for major block of navigation. And uh, part of me wants to do that. <laughs> I think I'm going to, right? Intended for a major block of navigation. Uh, the footer element often has lists of links that do not need to be in a nav element. So that's straight out of the documentation. If we go over and we look at the nav element, we're done with that. And we're done, done with this. Actually, I want to show you one thing in there. Uh, I, yeah, we'll do it at the end. We'll put that over there. And uh, let's go look at the, the nav element. So nav, and we look at the nav element. And uh, what we wanted to see about the nav element was the footer element often has links that don't need to be. So we'll just look for footer in here. Uh, typically, the footer element often has a list of links that don't need to be in a nav element. So that's, that's kind of interesting, right? Because when we were mocking up those other pages for the examples right here, uh, so like here, right, I'm like, all right, let's put all this stuff in nav. But in the documentation, it's saying, you know, footer often has a list of links that don't need to be in a nav element. So that's kind of like where it's not 100% totally clear, but we're getting it straight from the source. And, uh, and we could, you know, do it or not do it. But that's interesting just to ponder it there. It is common for footers to have a list of links to various key parts of a site. But the footer element is more appropriate in such cases, and no nav element is necessary for those links. So that's from the W3. One more take on it. A document have, may have several nav elements. For example, one for site navigation and one for intra-page navigation. So on that CNN example, right, I was kind of debating, hey, do I have both of these navs up here? And one is for intra-site navigation, and one is for, I don't know, what was the other one they said? Intra-site intra page, one for site navigation, one for page navigation. These are all pretty much site navigation, <laughs> not page navigation. All right, but anyhow, right? So not always clear and getting to know the nuances of the different tools we use and then, you know, using them to the best of our abilities and uh, not overthinking it like, okay, nav, good enough, right? How am I going to use it? And how does that work with the outline and the styling? But knowing kind of like the, the details. And then we have main. And main is the main content of the body of a document or application. And so again, I use that with, I believe that the CNN deal. Right here, I said, hey, here's the main content of this page, of the body of this page. And uh, main content of the body and content that is the central topic of a document or the central functionality of an application should be unique to the document, excludes content that's repeated across a set of documents, Sidebars, navigation links, copyright info, site logos, and search forms. Must not be a descendant of article aside, footer, header, or nav. Interesting. And only one main element can be used per document. And then there's an MDN example, which we could take a look at. And uh, I like seeing their examples. So here's main, right? And uh, main has information about apples, and then a paragraph describing it, and an article about Red Delicious, an article about Granny Smith. But that's the main content of this page. And so that's an example of how you might use it. So those are three tags. And that's using the documentation. Mostly we're looking at a content sectioning right here where we have a list of all of our element references, right? And, uh, and uh, so, yeah. And uh, come in here and you just read about them and then figure out the details and which one do you use where. Uh, last thing I'll show you, and this is just kind of cool, is this picture is something that, right, uh, can be a little bit confusing. But we're talking about, like, you know, the different categories that elements can belong to. So we saw the flow content category, the section and content category. And so this just says pretty much everything is flow, 
and then some things are heading they belong to both flow and have it heading so it's kind of like a Venn diagram with overlapping circles but that's what that that image is all right so in this video we have learned about uh, semantic elements and non-semantic elements and we saw a little bit more about reading documentation and uh, we got the specifics on header nav and main